Hello, this is Stephen Nojiri, and this is a video about what is Shinobi? What is Shinobi no Jutsu? What is Ninjutsu? And the important part of this video is that we're not just talking about a generic, you know, definition of the term. We'll start there, but what we're looking at more is the concept of Shinobi. And the reason that I've decided to make a video about this is because I feel it's important for you, the viewer, to understand that there are actually different concepts of shinobi. There really isn't a single unifying idea of what shinobi is. You will, you may or may not know that within historical research, even the concept of shinobi is kind of a confusing term and people disagree a lot on what the term means. And so this video is taking a look at why that confusion exists and we're going to look at two key versions of the concept and try to put everything into better perspective. So first off, let's try not to use the word ninja or ninjutsu, right? Those are not linguistically incorrect. It's not incorrect. It's not in, you know, it's not an error to say ninja or ninjutsu, but those are more modern ways to pronounce the word. All right, that is not how the that's not the original pronunciations. So for, for here on out, we're going to use Shinobi or Shinobi no Jutsu. Now, if Ninja or Ninjutsu pops up, that's just sort of force of habit. But to sort of keep it honest and keep it historical, we would stick to just Shinobi and Shinobi no Jutsu. All right, so the easiest and most direct answer to what is Shinobi and what is Shinobi no Jutsu, the, 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 the simplest, cleanest, easy answer is to say that Shinobi means infiltrator and shinobi no jutsu is infiltration techniques now just defining shinobi as infiltrator and shinobi no jutsu as infiltration techniques or techniques of infiltration that there's in in a nutshell that you know in, in the main that handles the definition of ninja like what is a shinobi Right, I just said ninja. <laughs> what is a shinobi, right? What is a ninja? What is a shinobi? Is an infiltrator. What is shinobi no jutsu? What is ninjutsu? Techniques of infiltration. That, that That's 90% of the work done, right? However, even though that's, you know, like I said, that's simple enough. If you view it and read it in this way, if you conceptualize shinobi as infiltrator and shinobi no jutsu as infiltration techniques, you'll be mostly correct. You will not be incorrect, You, but you won't have but there's a good amount of information that's still lost or left out when you go that simple. So while that is the simple and safe answer, let's go a little bit deeper to get a, a, a more profound understanding. So let's begin by stating there's not one single perfect way to comprehend or define Shinobi. That's the entire reason for this video, is that there is not a single perfect concept that you can understand as shinobi that will match every usage of the word through history or through the historical period and this is because the term is used differently by various organizations various uh, schools throughout the timeline of old japan now the term also is horribly distorted in 1900s japan Okay, but we're not going to touch on that in this video. This video is focusing on pre-1900s. So we're looking at historical Japan, old Japan, the Japan of the Bushi, the Samurai Japan, not 1900s Japan and onward, right? So, but again, the viewer should know that there is a, a massive amount of sort of confusing misunderstandings, essentially just really not... The, the 1900s is filled with a lot of stuff that you just have to throw away ultimately because it's just not accurate and it's bad research and bad total misunderstandings, et cetera, et cetera. So we're looking at the historical period, the definitions and the concepts used in the historical period. So, and we're just going to look at the concept of shinobi because shinobi no jutsu for right now we're going to just essentially leave that as techniques of a shinobi right so we're not going to spend all this time trying to figure out you know what are the main concepts of shinobi because remember there's no unifying single concept different traditions have different concepts so we're going to look at two main traditions 
and how they conceive of conceive conceptualize this I, this thing shinobi but um as far as shinobi no jutsu goes we're just going to say okay that is the techniques of shinobi and we're just going to leave it at that for this video and like i said we'll we'll, we'll look at you know a brief timeline and you various usages versions of the term this will not exhaust all the potentially related terms we're just going to focus on terms of, that specifically center around the nexus of shinobi which is the the kanji that we all know right the blade uh, the edge of the blade, the heart, the, it, you can see it on the screen, right? The famous kanji, the one that we all know to be shinobi. There are lots of terms in old samurai warfare for things that are similar to shinobi or might be related to shinobi. We're not going to touch on those. We're only going to touch on the ones that are rooted in this kanji. So for this purpose, on your screen, you will see three the three main terms shinobi as a single kanji now while this kanji when used alone and as a noun can refer to someone infiltrating a location by sneaking in such as in the taiheiki it tends to be used from the 1400s onwards to mean spy so this is again that is a that is the kanji one single kanji that kanji by itself and it is a noun and it's pronounced shinobi and like I said, in the Taiheiki, it's referring to somebody sneaking into a place, and we'll get to that. We will expound on that. But for general purposes, that kanji by itself means spy. The next term is shinobi no tsuomono. So you see this is that one kanji, but you see it's not exactly the same. There's something else going on. There's more kanji here. There's more written. This term means covert soldier or an infiltrating soldier. This refers specifically to a member of the war party who sneaks into enemy territory, but specifically it tends to refer to people who sneak into the enemy forces by blending into the confused enemy forces. It's usually it's a surprise attack. So there's a night attack or some kind of surprise attack, and in the confusion, the shinobi no suomono will blend into the enemy forces. And that's how they sneak in to the enemy forces. Now, this is also the exact reason that passcodes and passwords became a key feature of Bushi armies to prevent these type of agents from slipping in. Because the, you could slip in, but if you di but if you literally slipped in just in the confusion and then you are sort of asked passwords or passcodes later when somebody doesn't recognize you, well then that's that is one level of security. And this is exactly why these passcodes were developed because Shinobi no Suomono could slip in to the arm to the forces because remember you're talking about large war parties right where there's lots of people nobody knows everybody very easy in confusion for people to just slip in this way the third term is shinobi no mono now this is going to confuse people because again most people would think shinobi shinobi no suomono and shinobi no mono should all be the same term but what we're going to look into is that they're not actually exactly the same term these subtle differences in some cases make a different word or a different meaning in some traditions it it doesn't matter it's the same but there are traditions that change the meaning of the role the me the concept is different the role is different with these different terms so there are some traditions where shinobi no mono is not the same as shinobi shinobi no mono is not the same as shinobi no suomono in some traditions so shinobi no mono like I said this term can be used for spy interchangeable with the single kanji shinobi but it also has a history of being used for a recon scout not a spy a recon scout who finds secret travel routes through the enemy territory and performs secret signaling and secret messaging covert communication lines back to their headquarters so from these three terms which most people think are interchangeable and what I'm trying to explain to you is they are sometimes they are but in some traditions they are different roles they are different things so 
while these three terms appear to be the same thing, if you pay close attention, you can see that while there is overlap, each of them does have its own unique feature, its own unique reality, its own specific concept. So because of this, and like I said, in the historical records, we see some traditions treat them all as the same, but some do not. Here are some examples. In the Kusunokiru, which is a southern court, Tara Genji, Oe Genji tradition. The shinobi is a spy who is sent into the enemy territory to set up an intel network. And since this role contains all three of those previous definitions, all three terms can be used interchangeably. So in the Kusunoki tradition, saying the single kanji shinobi is equal to saying shinobi no mono. You don't really, you don't have to worry about it being two different words. However, in traditions such as the Hojo Ryu, which is a Koshu Ryu, Kusunoki Fuden Ryu hybrid. So Hojo Ujinaga specifically leaves spying and espionage to the Kanja, to the spies. It separates the Shinobi no Mono from the spies. So in the Hojo Ryu, in the Hojo tradition, right, Hojo Ujinaga's tradition, Shinobi no Mono are not spies. In the Hojo tradition, Hojo Uji Naga's tradition, the Shinobi no Mono do not spy. The Shinobi no Mono are recon scouts. They watch and they observe the enemy. So they go into enemy territory, they watch and they listen, they observe, but they do not engage the enemy in conspiracy. They do not get involved in espionage. They simply recon, and they special so they and oh, so they are recon scouts, not spies, and they specialize in finding secret access points to the enemy locations. So they establish these secret covert trails in and out of enemy territory, and they specialize in secret signals and communication. So they set, they find secret, they find, you know, covert ways in and out of the enemy territory. They set up secret communication lines and they recon the enemy, but they do not engage in espionage. So as you can see, the Kusunoki tradition and the Hojo tradition, they're both using the word Shinobi, Shinobi no Mono, but the actual role, what is actually being done is significantly different. The concept of Shinobi is different between these two traditions. So let's look, let's look at this a little deeper. So quickly, the Kusunokiru is a tradition. It begins with the Tara Genji tradition and the Oe Genji tradition. These two traditions are studied by a man named Kusunoki Masashige in the 1300s. It says he studies Tara and Oe traditions, then he puts his own twist on it. Then he joins Emperor Godaigo for the Kimu restoration. He develops espionage and guerrilla tactics so much so that he becomes a key figure of the Kimu Restoration, and his sons become the heroes of the Namboku Jidai. So again, his techniques, his techniques become core essential parts of some of the key Southern Court generals, such as his son Kusunoki Masanori and Momonoi Naotsune. So these Southern Court generals. Base their, southern, base their warfare styles off of this Kusunoki tradition. So this Kusunoki tradition and the larger Southern Court tradition become the staple of Southern Court loyalists in the 1400s and 1500s. And, by this, and then in the 1600s, multiple Kusunoki Ryu schools are opened and take on students. So for the Kusunoki tradition, you understand that this is Genji tradition and Southern Court tradition, and it's about guerrilla warfare, right? And it's a big component of the Southern Court loyalist as they fight in the 1400s and the 1500s, and then schools open during the 1600s. The Hojo Ryu is a product of Hojo Ujinaga. So Ujinaga is a master of Koshu Ryu. And in the 1640s, he's also studied Kusunoki Ryu, the, the, the Kusunoki Ryu school of Kusunoki Fuden. So remember I said multiple Kusunoki Ryu schools opened. Well, one of those is opened by a guy named Kusunoki Fuden. And Hojo Ujinaga studies that. 
but he all but he's a but his primary school is the Koshuru. Koshuru is very different from Kusunokiru. Koshuru basically teaches war of attrition, and Kusunokiru teaches um, reconciliation. So in Ho in the Koshuru, you completely destroy your enemy. In the Kusunoki tradition, you defeat your enemy up until the point where you can get them to sort of like join your side. It's two different worldviews, very different concepts. Both of these traditions approach warfare differently. So Hojo Ujinaga wants to try to attempt to reconcile, to blend Koshiru teachings with Kusunoki Fuden's ideals. And so he creates this experimental project, if you will, called Hojoru. So right off the top, we can see that the Kusunokiru tradition is older than the Hojoru tradition. And we see that Hojoru should have some influence from the Kusunokiru. All right, these are by, fact one, Kusunoki is older. Fact two, Hojoru is influenced by Kusunokiru, right? Okay. But as stated before, while we see this influence, we still see two very different ways of handling the concept of shinobi. Both agree that a shinobi is an infiltrator. Both quote the six secret teachings. But Kusunoki Ryu views shinobi as a spy infiltrator. The Hojoru is very clear that spies and shinobi are not the same thing. In the Hojoru, the shinobi performs recon into the enemy territory. Like I said earlier, they are long range recon units. They are not spies in the Hojoru. The Hojoru actually makes these very clear distinctions. There's three clear categories. They have monomi, which are patrols and in, uh, which patrols and so a, a, a monomi is a type of patrol or a type of scout, right? So monomi patrols and investigates local areas for enemies. Shinobi are long range recon. They speci they are specialist in sneaking in and secret communication. And kanja are the spies who engage in conspiracy and espionage. And in the Ho so this is how Hojo Ru breaks it down. And in Hojo Ru, these are three distinct roles, three distinct functions. You, you, if you're a Monomi, you're not doing Shinobi. And if you're a Shinobi, you're not doing Monomi. And if you're a Kanja, you're not doing Monomi. You know what I mean? So in Hojo Ru, these are three distinct, uh, th three distinct roles, three distinct concepts. Yet. In the Kusunokiru, which is the older tradition that the Hojoru should be taking from, it's very different. In the Kusunokiru, the shinobi is a spy who goes deep into enemy territory, undercover, and directly interacts with locals to establish a spy network that feeds data back to the headquarters, commits sabotage, and secures betrayals of enemy officers. Now, that is a very different role. That is a very different concept. So both traditions are using shinobi and shinobi no mono. However, they, the role, the definition, the concept is very different. So what's going on here? This difference appears to be based on two things. The size of the force and the history and heritage of the tradition. So size of the force and literally the background of the tradition. So we'll get into that some more, but you need to, these two factors, like burn these into your brain. The two things that causes Shinobi to be defined and conceptualized so differently are the size of the force and the history and heritage of the tradition itself. The Kusunokiru comes from the Tara Genji and the Oe Genji traditions that became organized by Kusunoki Masashige. We talked about this just a few minutes ago. Masashige adds his own thoughts on this and he comes up with a guerrilla, uh, 
a, a, a guerrilla warfare tradition for the southern court. So because of Kusunoki Masashige's studies and his own concepts blended in, he, uh, we get a southern court guerrilla warfare tradition. The size of the force is 500 or less. So we're talking about 500 or less warriors engaging in guerrilla warfare tactics, asymmetrical warfare. The Hojoru is based on Koshuru, which is a combination of teachings taken from surviving Takeda retainers gathered by a man named Obata in the early 1600s. The tradition is meant to be used by a large scale army, not small guerrilla forces. So Kusunoki is asymmetrical warfare from guerrilla forces and Koshuru is large army engaging in attrition. These are two very different concepts, very different models, two very different traditions. Kusunoki is 500 or less, <laughs> and the size of the army in Koshu is far larger than 500, far larger than 500. We're talking thousands, right? So this is one reason why the meaning of shinobi is different is is one reason the meaning of shinobi is different is almost certainly due to this fact that one is engaged with one is a much larger army just thousands of human beings and one is a small guerrilla force of you know 500 or less so in a large army jobs can be broken down into smaller pieces in a large army you have more people who can do specific tasks and so therefore the overall job description becomes simpler so we've looked at the size of the army and the heritage so the heritage of the Kusunoki is small guerrilla asymmetrical warfare and the size and tradition of the Hojo is large thousand, 10,000 soldier army that is not engaging in guerrilla or asymmetrical warfare. So guerrilla warfare versus attrition warfare. So the, the, the size numbers are different and the heritage is different. The entire reality of that force is very different. Now, let's back up for a second. And, and to be fair, let's just look back in history real quick. So to be fair, the first time that we see shinobi used, we do see it used for someone who sneaks into a location for the purpose of sabotage. That appears to be the first time that we see the kanji shinobi being used. It is a somebody sneaking in to burn something down. All right. So, so backing up, we can understand that shinobi, whether it's shinobi, shinobi no suomono, shinobi no mono, because remember, Kusunoki Ryu likes to use shinobi as a single kanji to designate the spy, but Hojo Ryu specifically avoids using shinobi as a single kanji and deliberately says shinobi no mono, right? So even though you would say it's, so they are not using that term interchangeably. So we have to just designate whether it's using a single kanji shinobi or whether it's using shinobi no mono. It makes a difference. But we can understand shinobi, whichever form, shinobi, shinobi no suomono, shinobi no mono, at its root is someone who sneaks into a location with the intent to do damage. But that makes sense because a shinobi is a bushi. A shinobi is a samurai. And the samurai's main purpose is to be the militant arm of the government. The samurai's job is to go to war. So the, the, the samurai's purpose is to cause damage to the enemy. So since a shinobi is a samurai, then anything they do, theoretically, should be to damage the enemy, to cause some kind of military, you know, damage to the enemy. Warfare, right? So it makes sense that if they sneak in somewhere, then their job is to sneak in and cause damage to the enemy. So with that understanding, we can see that all traditions agree that a shinobi is a samurai who sneaks into a location with the idea to do damage being innate to their life and role as a samurai. But the real difference is this. What kind of damage are they going to do? 
So that's the question to keep in your mind. So everyone agrees that a shinobi, whether you're the Kusunoki spy or you're the Hojoru long range recon, what everyone agrees that you're sneaking in to do damage, but what is that damage? So with that in mind, let's continue forward with that question. The Kusunoki Ru idea, so the Southern Court, the Genji idea of the shinobi, is that they the damage that they do is done through their conspiracies and the sabotage that they commit. They burn enemy supplies, they destroy relationships between generals and the leader, they can, or between the generals and their leaders and, and the generals themselves, they destroy the relationships among the enemy. They convince locals to turn against their lord. They convince locals to join their spy network. They damage, the damage is physical, psychological, economic, so the damage is physical, economics, psychological, political, right? You're, you're damaging the enemy in, in all of these different ways. You're physically destroying buildings and getting people killed. You're psychologically damn it, you know, ripping the forces apart. You're causing all of this chaos among the forces. The, your cost, you're bleeding them, you're bleeding the money, so there's economic damage, and then political damage, you're literally ruining like the politics or the, the, the ties between people, etc., etc. You are breaking the enemy down internally, so you've snuck in, and now you're doing this type of damage to them through this, through the espionage. The damage is extensive. And so the term, and so because the damage done by this type of Kusunoki concept shinobi is so extensive, it makes sense that the term shinobi would be expected to encompass a lot of functions and encompass a lot of meaning. So therefore, so in other words, because the damage done by this type of shinobi is so extensive, then the job description, the expectations, the things done, the concept of what this shinobi is, is equally complex. The Hojoru version doesn't actually do a lot of damage. They're intel gatherers. They find secret routes in and out of locations. They relay secret communications and signals to the main army. However, the Hojoru shinobi, the, the, the way that shinobi is conceived of by the Hojoru, right? They don't actually engage the enemy. And consequently, because the, this Hojoru concept shinobi does very little damage to the enemy, it, this is reflected in the more simple and less complex definition or concept of shinobi within the Hojoru. In other words, Hojoru shinobi don't really do in much damage to the enemy themselves. They gather intel and they, and they communicate back. But they don't actually engage in any kind of, you know, conspiracies and things like that. Because they do less damage, it makes sense that their definition, their job description, is far simpler. So hopefully at this point you can start to see that there are two very different concepts of what Shinobi is. And they're based on different, hair, you know, based on different traditions. The history of the tradition the heritage of the tradition, the size of the force at play, and the complexity of the job that is expected of the shinobi. And these things create completely different definitions for shinobi depending on which tradition is talking. So let's start to wrap this up. Let's look at these final two key points. We'll look at key point one and key point two. So one, the date of the terms. Key point one, the date of the terms. Kusunokiru Shinobi date back to the 1400s. Documentation becomes solid in the in the 1470s, and some documents in the 1590s, and then a lot of documents from 1610 to 1650. So we have documents from the 1470s, we have documents from the 1590s, and then we have lots of documents from 1610 to 1650. And the term shinobi is well locked into the Kusunoki tradition from the 1400s onwards. So the Kusunoki concept of shinobi as a spy is from the 1400s, is clocked in, 1400s onwards. So again, that's a spy who commits espionage, arson, etc. This is the this type of spy is the hub of a wheel of the various types of spies. I talked about this in my book, uh, In Praise of Spies. 
this shinobi is the living spy and the has a hub around him a wheel around him made of the other types of spies so um, but that's for a different video but essentially shinobi as a spy who commits espionage and all of these things that's kusunoki jirishin locked in 1400s onwards hojoru terms are from the 1640s right because this is 1640s this is when hojoru is solidified into a, a system 1640. So already we see, you know, there's hundreds of years difference here. So 1640. Koshu, Koshu, now, now this is this is also an important point, and, and we could have looked into this some more. So let's take a moment to just explore this. Koshuryu conceptualizes Shinobi as a type of militarized sneak thief. It even uses a different kanji. It doesn't even use the blade over the heart Shinobi kanji. It uses different kanji for a militarized sneak thief, but they pronounce the word, they pronounce it as shinobi. Hojoru, remember, Hojoru is blending this Koshuru militarized sneak thief with Kusunoki Fudin's shinobi spy. So Hojo Ujinaga is attempting to blend these two very different traditions. One tradition is a militarized sneak thief, and the other tradition is as a spy, and that's kind of where Hojoru gets this idea of a long-range recon officer. They kind of take aspects of both and create a, a, a third type of shinobi, if you will. The, the long-range recon shinobi comes from attempting to reconcile the sneak thief with the spy. So the point to consider, like I said, the militarized sneak thieves of the Koshu tradition are far less combatants, and they're more just specialized, they're specialists at sneaking in and out of locations. So this is another reason why the Hojo Ryu has their shinobi concepts separate from direct action against the enemy. Again, because Koshuru emphasizes these sneak thieves, Hojo Ryu also emphasizes this sneaking in and out of a location. And the shinobi is far less engaged in actual, you know, a, a, um, direct action, so to speak, against the enemy. We'll even stretch this out and take a moment to look at uh, the Natoriru document, right? Natoriru. So even though Natoriru has its roots in Kusunokiru, we see this same conceptual splitting evidenced in the sh in the Shoninki. There's a section in the Shoninki which I'm sure that most of the viewers either know about or can get quick access to, but it talks about the types of Shinobi no Suomono, or the types of covert soldiers. Now in this section, the five types of spy and the shinobi no mono are listed separate. This is odd because the natoriru should be reflecting kusunokiru, right? Which says that the five types of spy are the shinobi. The five types of shinobi, or you know, the five types of spy is AKA the five types of shinobi. But natoriru is deliberately putting a, a gap between the five types of spies and the shinobi. Where, which is similar to the, where the Hojo Ryu says the Shinobi are not the five types of spies. So, but now Natori Ryu does identify spies and Shinobi no Mono as types of Shinobi no Suomono, but it splits them. So this could be Natori Ryu's attempt to reconcile the differences between the sort of Koshu, Hojo, Takeda heritage and the Kusunoki teachings. Because as we know, Natori Ryu is, inf is, uh, is influenced, has tradition from Kusunoki Ryu, but we also know it has tradition from the Takeda retainers as well. So this could be an attempt to reconcile these. This is also an excellent point where Shinobi no Mono and Shinobi no Suomono don't mean the exact same thing. Because in this, in this teaching here, in this section of the Shoninki, the five types of spies are no, are acquiesced to be shinobi no suomono, but they're not shinobi no mono. So this is again an example of how those two terms are not interchangeable. Interestingly enough, in the shoninki, we also see that thieves appear under the types of shinobi no suomono. So thieves are identified as a type of shinobi no suomono, but they are not identified as shinobi no mono. They are different. So the five types of spies are different from the thieves who are different from the shinobi no mono. These 
these are not the same thing. They're all types of shinobi no suomono, but the shinobi no mono is not a thief, and a thief is not a spy, and a shinobi no mono is not a spy, and a spy is not a thief. Right? They're they're broken up. So these terms are clearly not in the, are being explained. They're being shown to not be interchangeable. They're related. They're all types of shinobi no suomono, but you cannot use the word. In, in this teaching, in this setup, you cannot use the word shinobi no mono to refer to a thief, and you can't use it to refer to a spy in, this, in that setup. So this also looks like another attempt of Natoriru trying to balance, to reconcile the Takeda heritage and the Kusunoki heritage. However, and I put this in red on the screen, Natoriru is very quick to point out that its origins are not the origins of the thieves. And this appears to be a clear reference to the Kusunokiru origins. Because in Kusunokiru, that connection between shinobi and thieves doesn't exist. In Kusunoki, where the in Kusunokiru, where the where the shinobi is a spy, there is no connection to thieves. The there's a slight the only time that thieves and shinobi connect is when it says that because thieves are good at sneaking into places, a shinobi should study with thieves on how to sneak in and out of places, but that's it. That's the only connection. Other than that, the shinobi spy of the Kusunoki is no connection to thieves. Just you study with thieves to learn how to sneak in and out of places, that's it. There's no other connection. All right, and the second final point is that Kusunokiru has various types of shinobi. That is, because shinobi means a deep cover spy operating in enemy territory to establish an espionage and a sabotage network, right? That's a big job. Because it's a big job, you get several adjectives or modifiers that can be added to the kanji shinobi or shinobi no mono in order to clearly point out types of shinobi or the qualities of a shinobi. However, hojo ryu, for example, this does not happen to the shinobi. Because the shinobi is such a reduced and simplified definition, they do not get modifiers. They do not get adjectives. It's shinobi no mono, that's it. You don't get types of shinobi no mono. You just get one. You get shinobi no mono, done. Long range recon, done. No modifiers, no adjectives. Hojoru has does have modifiers and adjectives for their mon, for their patrols, their monomi, and their, and their spies, the kanja, right? So they have types of spies, and they have types of monomi. But the shinobi has no types. There's just one. Shinobi no mono, long range sc recon scout, done. That's it. You get one and only one type of shinobi in the hojo ryu. Long range recon scouts who establish secret pathways and communication lines. That's it. Nothing else. So this lack of modifiers is also found in the Koshiru, right? In the Koshiru, the shinobi is a sneak thief, and that's it. So Koshiru, shinobi, that's a sneak thief, right? They're militarized sneak thieves. In Hojoru, long-range recon scouts. No modifiers. It's a real simple job description done. Kusunokiru, where the job description is bigger and, and more complex, you get types of shinobi. You get modifiers. So what can we take away from this examination? I a brief examination. Now, I know this video is long, and for those of you that have stuck it out, good job. Hopefully this is meaningful and helpful to you. But this is still an incredibly brief look at the topic. So what can we take away from this brief look at the topic? Well, one, evidence suggests that Shinobi of Kusunokiru is the older concept. Literally, it is the one that appears farther back in history. Two, shinobi as a type of spy who operates as part of a small guerrilla force is the older concept. So that is the Kusunoki concept. So one and two go hand in hand. The Kusunoki concept is that shinobi is a spy as part of a guerrilla army, and that is the as a small guerrilla asymmetrical force. That is the older concept. That's the one that appears farther back in history. Three, shinobi as a thief is a newer and less complex concept born from a from different origins from a different heritage than the shinobi concept of kusunokiru and this type of shinobi even uses different kanji initially 
So it's it's completely different. The only similarity is that sneaking in and out is involved and that the word is pronounced shinobi. But other than that, you would think it's two totally different concepts, two totally different jobs. Four, the Hojo Ryu's reduced, simplified concept of shinobi as a long range recon scout is an interesting blend of the Kusunoki spy and the Koshuryu thief. It's clearly a simplified concept born in the 1640s as an attempt to reconcile the two very different shinobi concepts of two radically different traditions. So number five, in the end, different schools define and conceptualize shinobi differently. If you're from a Kusunoki background, shinobi is a type of spy. If you're from a Koshu Hojoru background, shinobi is either a militarized thief and or a long range recon scout. It's two very different realities based on two very different systems. So congratulations if you made it to the end of this video you get the bonus segment. Here's the bonus segment. We're gonna now we're gonna try to wrap this up with uh, a couple of little interesting historical tidbits. So the first one is one Fujibayashi, right, the author of the Bansen Shukai. In an attempt to reconcile these two very different shinobi concepts, he utilized material from Yoshitsune Ryu and presented Yonin and Inin. Now, I, Yoshitsune Ryu had already begun to try to merge these two ideas together. So Fujibayashi wasn't the first person to do this. If you want to sort of see the beginnings, so I mean, in some ways, Hojo Ujinaga was trying to merge the Koshu and the Kusunoki ideas together, but he still ended up creating something that was unique to Hojo Ryu, right? Whereas Yoshitsune Ryu is trying to really like not drop anything. Yoshitsune Ryu is probably the first one that tried to truly merge these together. Like, how can it actually reconcile these without dropping stuff, right? But Fujibayashi did this like sort of succeeded in this by just literally saying yonin and inin right so the yang, the the yang ninja and the 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 yin ninja right so yonin being the spy and inin being the sneak thief aspects and if you're familiar with the bansen shukai it's literally split in half the first half is yonin spying the second half is like sneaking into places so with Yonin and Inin, with this development, with this way of saying this is how we're going to define it, we see a great merging of these two different concepts into a single unifying shinobi idea. Now granted, this does sort of play into the overdefined shinobi of the late Edo period, where the word shinobi ends up, this, this merging of these concepts on one hand reconciles the different definitions reconciles the different world, you know, concepts of shinobi, but it does give us a very overinflated, very overdefined shinobi, where, you know, it the word shinobi ends up being meaning almost too many things. Um, and the so right, so that leads in Fujibayashi also utilized the now famous shinobi means the heart like the edge of a knife teaching, right? The one that everyone parrots, the one you hear everywhere. This teaching is something Fujibayashi seems to have created as a generic unifier. Remember, Fujibayashi's goal was to take all of these different concepts of what shinobi was and unify them into like a single tradition, something that brings everything together. And and when he did that, he created the heart like the edge of a knife thing, right? The the edge of the knife heart thing, right? So that's not how all the traditions read that kanji, right? So Kusunoki Ryu, so as so I myself am an avid Kusunoki Ryu person. All right. So we're gonna end this video with well, how does Kusunoki Ryu explain the kanji? It's very different meaning for shinobi. Aside, you know, a, 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 there's the obvious fact that the kanji means covert stealth. So first and foremost, the kanji for shinobi means covert. It means stealth. That's pretty obvious. But in Kusunoki Ryu, it speaks of shinobi having two levels. The first level means defiance. 
and it's defiance against the rules or the expectations, defiance against the way things are supposed to work. And the example is given in the text is using a fan to block the sun. So it's a hot, sunny day, and in defiance to physics, right, the expectation, the expectation is you're going to go outside, you're going to be hot because you're in the sun. In defiance of the rules, in defiance of the laws of physics, in defiance of the expectation, you put a fan between you and the sun, and you are literally breaking the expectation. You're bending the rules. You're defying what the, 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 the sort of norm in order to get your result. That's the first definition of shinobi. And it refers to shinobi, liter, uh, to shinobi breaking the rules, bending the rules, covertly moving about, manipulating things in order to change the outcome, not accepting the normal expected outcome, but manipulating things in order to get different results. That's the first definition of shinobi, the defiance, holding a fan up to, the, to block the sun. Then it says, with experience and wisdom, shinobi, the kanji shinobi, becomes, that takes on the meaning of acceptance, a deep acceptance that is inseparable with shunyata, or the, the Buddhist teaching of emptiness. So you see, in Kusanoki, there is a very different, very sort of, very unique and very different explanation for the kanji shinobi that is not the sort of generic version that Fujibayashi utilizes in the Bansen Shukai. And again, what we're seeing here is we're seeing specific traditions that have specific heritage, and then, and then like Kusanoki, and then you're seeing people like Fujibayashi who are trying to blend these very different systems into, into a, un, a reconciled, unified tradition, and literally having to make up new things such as Yonin and Inin in order to do that, or to prevent, or to present oversimplified things such as the edge of the knife over the heart, it means blah, 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 uh, as the meaning of the kanji, when the more specific traditions have much more deep and esoteric teachings about what these things mean. And that is it for this video. As always, um, these videos are meant to be brief and they are meant to be to inspire you or to give you a starting off point. The material in this video is copywritten by me, so please do not steal this material. Please do not take it. Please do not copy it. Again, it, I hope it inspires you. I hope that it sets you off on your own investigations and explorations, but please be respectful.